What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we are back at work on the white truck. We got to get this motor all hooked up, all the wiring, exhaust. Well, we got to build the exhaust, intake, all that good stuff. Get oil in it, get cooling in it, see if this thing still runs. So the first thing I want to do before I do any of that is fix this body lift. So this thing has got a massive three inch body lift and nothing lines up. The brake lines are way too short. I can't get them mounted correctly. The steering shaft um, doesn't even go deep enough because it hits the firewall. And there's just a lot of issues with it. Obviously three inches way overkill. So instead of spending the $200 or whatever for a new body lift, I'm actually just gonna cut these, these uh, pucks down and just get shorter bolts. And that's gonna be the easiest and obviously cheapest way. So the easiest way I found to mess with the body lifts and everything without actually pulling the whole cab off is just do one side at a time. So I'll go around and loosen all the bolts on both sides and then I'll just take bolts out of one side, jack this side of the cab up, pull out the lift, we'll cut them down, we'll drop it back down, put the bolts back in, and then we'll lift up the other side of the cab and do the same thing. As far as the bed, um, probably do it the same way. I might just pull the whole thing off since it's easy enough to pull off, but we'll start with the cab, get that cut down. So what I'll probably do is just cut those in half and just do an inch and a half lift. That seems to be kind of the norm for getting all the right clearance and everything for this motor. I know you can get away with an inch, but that extra half inch makes it a lot easier to work on it. There's just, especially in the back up above, to get to them bow housing bolts or anything, if I were to pull the tranny out, there really isn't much room, especially without a body lift. So we'll probably do, like I said, inch and a half. All right guys, we got this one side off. So what I'm gonna do is use my bandsaw and I got this stop set up. And so what I'm doing is cutting each side because there's actually a quarter inch wall inside of that, which I figure I might as well keep. It probably adds a little bit of strength to the actual puck. So I just got that stop set up so I can just shove it in there, bottom it out, cut that side, flip it over, same deal cut that side and it'll be right out about an inch and a half. All right guys, I officially give up. This stuff I cannot get to cut straight. So you can see the angle on that. And the problem with it is these blocks aren't flat they're molded and they're kind of they're like wavy and they're not consistent at all so i can set the blade to cut it straight on one and then i'll either flip it over or throw a new block in there and it won't cut straight so i am just going to buy just the blocks themselves i just i pick some up on ebay they're like 60 bucks for the whole kit and then i'll just go to the hardware store and get my own bolts but this is going to take way too long to actually get these things flat and straight inconsistent so like i said i'm just gonna buy all new blocks and just take the take the easy way out because this is gonna take way too long so what we can do in the meantime while we're waiting for that body lift stuff we'll just get this thing back together get all the wiring in get the starter on clutch system and get this thing back in you know running running condition anyway
All right guys, next thing I'm gonna tackle is getting this EVAP system all put together. So this is a pressure solenoid here. I'm gonna cut this bracket up, mount it up right about there. And then <clears throat> that wiring plug in is right there. Then there's two more VSV sensors that probably just mount down here by the igniter. That's worked pretty good. And then all my vacuum lines are all gonna be right here and in this one spot, not going you know, all the way across the engine bay. Right, guys there we go we got both these other vsvs in here so i'm using the pressure sensor off of the tacoma um, one of the vsvs is off the tacoma and then one of them is off the 3.0 just you know at a 3.0 pickup that this truck is so i found a diagram online that has all this routing um, i'll link it it's right there it's on a, it's on someone else's build thread and apparently it works pretty good. So we're gonna try it out. The wiring reach is fine. Everything works pretty good. This is actually the factory bracket for the 3.0. So I bolted the sensors onto that. I'm gonna pull it back off and give it a paint job. But other than that, that's pretty clean, tucked up in there, not much of a mess. So pretty happy with that. And then we just got one intake. It's basically the purge uh, line that goes into the top, top port here and then just right to the intake. So very, very simple to set up. That should work pretty good. There we go guys, this thing is 100% ready to start. We got oil, coolant, I bled the clutch, I still haven't bled the brake system. So we can get that at any time really, but everything else is good to go. All the wiring, vacuum, you saw all this stuff that I did here with the EVAP, so all that is done. So last thing we gotta do is fire it up, see if she still runs. Well, she fired right up, running pretty smooth. No leaks other than my, uh, over, apparently I overfilled my power steering and it came bubbling out. But other than that, I don't see any leaks. Coolant's dripping a little bit out of there. I'm trying to bleed it. So far, everything seems good to go. No leaks, like I said. So I guess the last thing we really gotta do is get the coolant all the way bled, get the power steering bled, bleed the brakes. I need to build some sort of a bracket or box to hold the battery in. And something with this intake, I really don't like this cheapo Chinese intake. So I may look for an actual factory 3-4 air box and 
hose that way I can kind of have it all factory looking and these cheap aftermarket intakes really just don't work that well but that is minor details it's running smooth so very very happy about that so guys let me know if you have any parts laying around like I said I want to get a factory air box set up and I need the whole tube and everything and I also I'm looking for a manual transmission computer because this automatic ECU obviously is throwing all the codes for the tranny and I'm trying to get this thing code free. You know, I like, I don't like check engine lights. So it's gotta be, I believe 98, 99 or 2000, three, four uh, manual and four wheel drives. So if you have any of that, please let me know in the comments. That would help out greatly. We just got a few other little things to do to the actual engine to make it you know, 100% for running wise. I need to get an O2 sensor in the rear. I have the front one, I don't have the rear. The EVAP is all done, so that should be good. Um, gotta bleed the brakes and just finish up a couple little things. So we're well on our way to have a great running motor. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.